Hi, this is Kevin Trainer, and uh, welcome to my tutorial on installing Anaconda on Mac OS. This uh, tutorial is uh, intended for the use of, of the students in my classes. Uh, so this isn't a general tutorial on Anaconda, but one uh, that's going to meet the needs uh, for a couple of uh, a couple of different uh, classes that I teach where we're using uh, a Python and we're getting our uh, Python uh, tool set from um, from Anaconda. Okay, so if you're from somewhere else and you happen to find this and you find it helpful, well, that's great. But um, uh, I've warned you. Uh, the other thing is that Right now, um, uh, it's uh, January 2018, and I'd like these uh, tutorials to have a decently long life. I'd like them to be, to be good for about a year or so. And that means that those of you who are following it are going to find out that the versions of software that you have are uh, slightly newer, or maybe even a lot newer, than what I'm showing you here today. And uh, I'm going to say that the basic solution for that is to use a newer version. I mean, there are situations where newer combinations of tools have uh, some kind of uh, broken aspect to them. And uh, typically, if that's the case, I'll warn you in, uh, in the, the materials for the course or in a lecture or something like that, that... Um, Oh, don't go so far as to install version whatever with version whatever because that's not working yet. But generally speaking, we're going to assume that they're going to be working and uh, so go with the newest uh, version. So what are the versions that I have here? Well, I have a uh, Mac OS virtual machine and if we just ask it about this Mac, it says that we're running Mac OS High Sierra version 10.13.2. Now today I think that's the newest version of Mac OS High Sierra. Okay, and when we go to install um, Anaconda, we're going to go for the newest version as well. Okay, so how are we going to install Anaconda? Well, we're going to use our browser and uh, here we're going to use a Safari browser and uh, Instead of going to my weekly schedule that has a link on it for the Anaconda, Anaconda download page, I just want to go searching for it. So let's uh, let's uh, search Anaconda uh, download. Okay, and looks like a pretty current uh, download page. And uh, let's see, it's from October 2017. That looks good. And if we go down, uh, the first thing is we see something that says, well, download for your preferred platform. And I'm on Mac OS. But if we scroll a bit further, we can see that, oh, you know what? Um, it can actually detect what operating system I'm on. And it's currently um, offering me Anaconda 5.0.1 for the Mac OS installer. So that looks pretty good. That looks like what I want. Now, if, if we pull down a little further, we'll see there's more than one version of the Anaconda installer. And um, if you've been around Python for a while, you know that... Uh, the two uh, big versions of Python are uh, Python 2 and uh, Python 3. And um, uh, in my classes, we always use uh, Python 3. Um, so we don't want to install the Python 2.7 version. We want to install whatever the Python 3 version is. And right now, uh, today, that's uh, Python 3.6. So that's what we're going to want to download and install. Okay, so let's uh, click on, on the, the download button. And while it's downloading, oh, um, oh, 
that there's an opportunity to download a cheat sheet. Uh, so I don't have my e email uh, connected here, so I'm not going to download it to here. But the Anaconda cheat sheet is something that I'm going to uh, show you, and it's something that I recommend that you use. Uh, so um, this would be a place where you'd probably want to fill it out and say, uh, say that you want the cheat sheet, and it shows up immediately in your email. You can also uh, d download it from the uh, browser. Um, so I've got my download started, and I'm going to pause the recording and be right back when my download's done. Okay, and that's done. That took a couple of minutes on uh, my machine with my pretty fast uh, connection. So down here in the lower right where, of the uh, the dock, I have uh, I have the downloads a folder. So I'll click that, and it'll fan out. And I see the latest thing that came down is this Anaconda three. Um, uh, 3501 um, installer package. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to let that open up. And it looks like a pretty typical installer, so I'll click continue. And this is license information, so I'll click continue and continue again. And now it puts up a dialog where I can agree. So I'm going to uh, click agree to say that I agree to the license terms. And now uh, I get the opportunity to change where it's going to be installed, but I kind of like the default place that it installs on uh, Mac OS. So I'm just going to let it go to the, to the default location. So uh, click on install again. Uh, and now it wants a password. Now this is the password to my, in this case, it's my virtual machine, but it's the computer that you're on. So I'm going to put that in. And click on the button for install software. And it, it'll do some crunching, and it'll install the software. So let's see that happen. So it's doing some thinking. And I guess we'll watch it a little bit. I don't remember this taking a, a terribly long time, so I'm not going to pause it. But while we're waiting, let's talk about what Anaconda is. Um, so Anaconda is an open source uh, uh, data science uh, uh, platform um, for Python. And uh, it is a collection of uh, Python uh, packages or libraries uh, that are uh, compatible with each other. So one of the issues uh, that's kind of plagued uh, Python for years uh, is the compatibility of different um, different bits of uh, Python software. So we have the compatibility issues between um, uh, Python 2 and Python 3. Uh, but even more than that, uh, with Python 2 or 3, you get the compiler and you get the built-in libraries uh, that come with the uh, compiler. But um, then there's a lot of other things that you want to do. Uh, for instance, you might want to work with a Jupyter uh, notebook. Um, or, uh, as we do in uh, several of my classes, you might want to work with uh, Django. Okay, well, then there's a bunch of libraries or packages that need to be installed, and you need the right version to go with the right version of everything else. 
um, Anaconda does a really good job of allowing you to download one coordinated set right out of the blocks. And then also you are able to manage these virtual environments uh, which um, allow you to collect up slightly different combinations of packages that you're going to use for different projects. Uh, and this is a common thing. There are several ways to do this in the Python world. But um, Anaconda, which is called Conda for short, uh, has um, a particularly good version of this. And this is what I've been using in my courses, and it's been useful to students. It's been, um, I just think it, it, it's led to a, a really good experience overall. And the nice thing is since a lot of, a lot of my students are, uh, uh, have a uh, data science uh, uh, focus, um, they've installed a set of uh, tools that uh, will allow them to go do some of the projects that they want to do without having to go and download a bunch of other software in order to uh, get what they want. So uh, I see that we've come to the end of that installation and we're going to come back and close. And uh, do I want to move the installer to the trash? Yeah, I think I do. It's uh, pretty big. And my virtual machine's not that big. So I've got all that kind of stuff down. Um, as long as I'm here, let's also get this Anaconda cheat sheet. Okay? So I'm going to search for the Anaconda cheat sheet. This is actually from Anaconda. They call it the Conda it Cheat Sheet. And I'm going to click on this. And you can see it's right here. So, um, um, here we go. There's a link to a tutorial. Um, they also talk about a product that we're going to take a peek at called Anaconda Navigator, which allows you to... Uh, uh, manage all these things that we've been talking about using uh, a program that has a graphical user interface. Um, the typical way that you manage um, a conda is using the command line. So the cheat sheet is for the command line. Okay, so we've got that there. And I think I'm going to save that. So let's just uh, save that into uh, documents conda cheat sheet that looks good and i'm going to close the browser and go to the finder and go to documents and i'm going to open that conda cheat sheet um, which is going to open in preview which is the mac os um, PDF uh, viewer, among other things. Okay, good. That looks good. So we have that when we need it. Okay. So, uh, let's uh, do some interesting things. Let's take a look at um, that uh, graphical tool for uh, the controlling for mm, configuring with with uh, conda okay so oh sorry i shouldn't have uh, closed that um let's go to applications and this thing that they were talking about i haven't done a lot of work with it i've used mostly the command line but uh in the last couple of weeks I, i've taken a look at an anaconda navigator because I, th I thought my students would like it and um I still think that. So let me let me fire up a copy. And um, what I like about it is that it it shows you pretty well what it's doing. I finally double clicked on it. I think that's what I really needed to do. All right. 
it's going to fire up in just a minute here. It's initializing. So then the question is, um, while we're waiting for that to initialize, uh, I'm going to say, yeah, OK, you can get the statistics from me. We're waiting for that. I just thought, um, where did Anaconda go? OK, well, let's look. So if we look on our overall hard drive that um, is being managed by Mac OS, you can see that we just have Anaconda 3 right here. All right. And if we open it up, we can see there's a copy of Anaconda Navigator there. Um, there's a bunch of uh, directories that have all the packages that we wanted, um, including the the Python uh, 3.6 uh, compiler, etc. Uh, something that we're going to uh, be taking a look at soon is the directory for the environments. And what's interesting is there isn't one right now because we haven't created any yet. So that's pretty interesting. So we'll look at that. All right. So we've got that. Now, um, let's also look at having installed this on the Mac before we look at the navigator. Um, I'm wondering what, um, what version of the of uh, Python is going to run now if we um, if we ask for uh, Python. So let's go. I always like to go to this launch pad. And within launch pad under other you'll find a terminal. Sometimes my virtual machine wants to uh, paint this particular screen pretty slowly. Don't quite know why that happens, but it does. Okay, and here's a terminal. So let's let's fire up a terminal. I double clicked on that. Let's try that again when it's actually listening. Now this is kind of strange. So I think a terminal is probably open underneath. So I'm going to press escape. And I can see terminal seems to be down there. Yeah, there's a terminals open. OK, good. And um, of course, this is the command line interface for the Mac. And the type's a little small for me. So I'm going to uh, shift command plus it to make it a little, a little bigger. So you guys will be able to read it. OK, uh, and uh, let's just type uh, Python hyphen hyphen version. And let's see what it says. So it says we're running Python 3.6.3 .3 from Anaconda Inc. OK, and then let's just uh, type uh, Python again to start up the 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 Python environment and you see a little bit more information here but again we're running uh, Python 3.6.3 .3. and we're just going to quit which you do with uh, uh, quit and uh, parens and we're done so we're out of there okay so that's what you get um, uh, so if you just install Anaconda and you don't create any of these environments, okay, and you said that you wanted uh, Python 3.6.3, um, there is a concept in Anaconda of a, a sort of a root environment. Uh, and Python 3.6.3 is part of your root environment. And so when you just, um, when you just go out, to the command line and you say you want to run Python, that's what it finds. Okay, so that's pretty good. So we're going to shrink this down here. We'll be back to the command line in a bit.
Okay, and then let's go back. Um, here's something else I want to do. I typically want to take these uh, programs I had to hunt for, and I want to right-click and on, under Options, I want to say keep them in the dock. So I do that for Terminal, which is easy to do while it's it's uh, currently running. And I'm also going to do that for Anaconda Navigator. So Options, keep that one in the dock too. So let's go back to Anaconda Navigator. And um, there's a lot of things that people might be interested in here. But what I'm the most interested in is these environments. Because uh, as soon as we get a, a little of the way through my typical course, especially in uh, one of the Django-related courses, uh, these environments are going to be really important to us. And there are other environment managers, and uh, typically, you know, you might be going through a tutorial from one of our textbooks, and they'll say, um, they'll give you the text for using uh, uh, some other environment manager, and then I'll have sort of alerted you to say, oh, okay, when we're going to do this environment management, we're going to do it with Anaconda. So then you're going to want to know how to do this. So if we click over in, in the Navigator panel, we look at these environments. Uh, we see with it, we have one that's called root. Okay. Uh, and um, if we come over here to the right side where we're displaying all this uh, stuff, let's see if we can make this a little farther to the left here. See if we can get everything on the on the page. Yeah, uh, that's better. Uh, here are the packages. Okay, so these are all the packages that uh, came with Anaconda um, uh, 3.5. Okay, and uh, what are some of them? Well, I. One of the things that people like where, to work with is are these uh, Jupyter Notebooks. So uh, Jupyter Notebooks already installed. Okay. Uh, pretty good. Okay. Um, let's see what else we can find. Um, uh, NumPy. Uh, very popular. Uh, popular uh, uh, a package. Uh, uh, Pandas, another very popular package. Already installed and already the version that's compatible with our compiler and all that kind of stuff. So if you're just taking a Python course, um, you might be able to stop right here. Okay? You'll probably have everything that you want. The only thing that you're going to want to make sure is that uh, whatever tools you're working with are um, knowledgeable about where you have all this stuff installed and uh, uh, it's all installed in this uh, Python root environment. Okay? Pretty straightforward stuff. Well, what if you want to create some other environments? All right? Well, let's look at this. The typical thing for us would be uh, to say, let's say, let's say we're in our, uh, one of my courses uses uh, uh, Django, okay? So, um, well, before that, let me say this. I never like to change the underlying root copy of anything, okay? So what I would do is, I would create a, a conda environment just for plain old Python programming using uh, Python 3.6. So how would I do this? Well, I would click uh, Create. Okay. And it looks like it's going to give us Python 3.6. We could ask for R if we we're in some kind of a data science course that used R, but we're... Uh, um, I'm not going to include that here. So we have to come up with a name. And um, let's, uh, let's give it a, a sort of a descriptive name. Uh, plain old 
Python programming. Okay, so I, I have a, a lot of coursework where this is going to work just fine. So let's uh, call it that and click on uh, Create. And when you do that, what are you going to get in the environment? Well, you're going to get the Python 3.6. And then we'll see what's in there. We'll see if everything's in there or some of the stuff is in there. You think uh, you can see it working away there. And if you look down the bottom, you can actually see it creating the environment. And it's it's in a directory under the Anaconda 3 directory called ENVS environments. And it has a directory name for plain old Python programming. And it's putting all of the packages and all that kind of stuff that it needs for us um, in the right spot. So I'm going to pause it until that's ready. Shouldn't take too long. And I'll be back when we're ready. Hi. Well, we're back. Well, a couple of things have happened. Uh, one it is uh, we've gotten to the end of that. Uh, we've gotten to the end of that. Um, configuration for a plain old Python programming environment. But it, it's telling us that there's a new Anaconda navigator. Okay, so it went out when it went out to fetch things for that environment plain old Python programming. Uh, it, it found another Anaconda navigator and uh, do we want to install it? I'm going to say uh, yes. What the heck? Um, do I want to quit it? Yes. Well, I guess I wanted to quit it. So yes. Uh, and updates available. Update now. Now the last time I practiced this, I updated it and it seemed to work reasonably well. Um, so I think it's probably a good idea. This is a consistent with my general advice that I gave in, in the beginning of the session, which is, uh, unless you hear otherwise, uh, take the newest version of everything. So let's launch the navigator again, see where we are. And it's initializing. Okay, and let's look at the environment and we've got plain old Python programming. I think we can, uh, just probably a way to make it big enough so that we could see that whole name. But um, so we've got that. So let's look at this. Uh, let's look at Python. It's in alphabetical order. Okay. So O P Pi. Um, Python, general pro purpose programming language, and what do we have? 3.6.3. .3. Okay. And I think what that probably means, that little arrow, it probably means that this uh, is that we're pointing to the version that uh, came down on our general download. Okay. And we have some other things here that we have a newer version of that just uh, came from the creation of that environment. Okay. Um, what else can you do here? Um, so what we would do here with that I environment uh, name is that we would be sure. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I what we were looking at before i'm not sure when we when we click on this play button it gives us a couple of things that we could do but if we click here let's let's click on um the root okay and uh it shows us the information for the root that's what i think we were looking at before and now if we come down to plain old python programming and click on that it'll refresh it and we'll see 
the rest of the stuff here uh, for plain old Python programming. Okay, so we want to create another one. Oh, I'm sorry, I kind of interrupted myself. We're going to do a lot of, in my uh, classes, we typically are doing our uh, coding and uh, debugging and testing and all that kind of stuff using um, an IDE called PyCharm. And there's a place in PyCharm where you, you uh, create your project or later on if you miss that opportunity uh, you can go to a place to configure your project um, where you, you, you can point it to the proper environment that you want uh, to work with. Uh, in a Python course, well, for the most part you're pointing it to the compiler. Um, in a course where we would be using Django, well, we, you know, we're not only pointing it to the the compiler in the environment, uh, it, it's a proper version of Django and all the related stuff, right? Uh, so, um, uh, let's say we were going to work with uh, Django and we wanted we wanted another environment to do that with. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take the environment we have here and I'm going to uh, get to the bottom and say I want to clone it. And what's the new environment name? And let's uh, call this uh, um, Django 11 development. Okay, at the time we're doing this now, the most current release of uh, Django is uh, Django 11. And um, uh, in the beginning of my Django course, uh, I have you do a tutorial where you're using Django 11, at least at this point. So that'll be a good one to have. So let's uh, click on clone. So we're cloning this stuff over. And my thought is that's going to go a little bit faster than if we simply said it. we wanted to create one from scratch like we did the last one. Yep, that went a lot faster. And uh, Django development is the one we're looking at now. Let's look at this. And let's look at stuff like, um, where's our Python compiler? Well, 3.6.4, that, that's the one we had before. That's good. Okay, what about Django? Do we have Django? No, we don't have Django here. How do I know? Well, let's just go look. If you look at what we're looking at now, we're looking at the packages that are currently installed. Okay, so if you, and they're listed alphabetically. So you can just go up to a D for DJ Django. Django. And you're going to see that there's no Django here. Yeah. Where are we? Yeah, should be right in here. And it's not. Okay. Well, what we can do is we can we can say here, let's just look at uh, what's not installed. So these are parts of the um, the Anaconda group of packages that they support that we can just kind of easily add. Okay, so uh, let's look. Let's go down to the Ds and see if we can find a Django and see if it's the right version. See if we have a Django 11. And we should. Uh, Django. Uh, yeah, 1.11.3, just what we want. So we're just going to uh, click this. And now we're going to say apply. It's that easy. So uh, the alternative, which I'll show you in a minute or two. Oh, it's telling us here because of uh, dependency, there's there's another package that has to be installed in addition to Django. And that's going to be uh, fine. 
So we'll just uh, click on apply again. Um, so you can do this uh, same stuff at the command line, and it's it's not as uh, it's not as easy as easy for those who are not uh, command line uh, superstars or um, command line uh, people who like the command line. Okay, uh, but it's the same work, and that this is probably just a shell that's built over top of those tools. Right, so, but it's kind of pretty and it's kind of straightforward and I hadn't been using it, but uh, I thought that people might like it. And um, uh, I've used it for a little while and I kind of like it myself. So it's bringing down the uh, Django package and the other package. And let's see where we are. Now we're still on not installed, so that's not what we want. Let's let's click on you see there's no activity down here at the bottom right. So it's it's fully installed. But let's go back to installed. Okay, and then let's see if we can find Django and make sure it's there. It's going a little slow, so let's bring it up. Django. 1.11.8. Isn't that terrific? Okay, so it could be that simple, right? So um, what do you do with these things? Well, if you want to do some of these things in, if you want to work with them on the command line, for instance, uh, you can uh, take a particular environment here and click on the uh, play button at the end of it. Uh, and you can say uh, you want to either open a terminal, okay, and that's going to um, that's going to put you at the command line. But interestingly, when you activate one of your environments, um, and this is true with all the environment management uh, tools, you will get an expression. Over here, either um, it'll show up on one line or it'll show up on every line. Uh, but it'll say the name of the environment that you're in. And it's typically in parens. So uh, what it says here is that, okay, um, you're working in the environment configured as Django 11 uh, development. Okay, all right, and we can do whatever we need to do at the command line. That's good, and we want to get out of that. We can say exit. Okay, so we're going to do that. Uh, the other thing we could have done was to say, uh, I'd like to open it with Python. And here it's just going to crank up the Python environment. And again, all the packages that you're supposed to have are going to be available. Um, uh, and there you go. Okay, and again, we're we're going to we're going to, just going to say quit here, and we quit that. All right. So pretty good. Now, um, um, so that's how you do this. Uh, if you want to use Anaconda Navigator. What if you didn't want to do that? What if you wanted to work at the command line? Well, uh, let's take a look at that. Okay. So, we're going to quit Anaconda Navigator. And let's go back and let's take a look at this uh, Conda cheat sheet. These are all things that you can do with... Um, this thing always drives me crazy. I forget how to get rid of this. Oh, this is how I get rid of that. Um, hide sidebar. There we go. Now we're seeing a little bit more. So, um, what if we wanted to do the kind of things that we just did, but we wanted to do them at the command line? How would that happen? 
Well, uh, let's take a look. Okay. So um, let's bring up the command line again. And let's kind of split our screen between the cheat sheet and the command line. I kind of like doing that. Okay. We're going to have to give the cheat sheet a little more room because uh, otherwise the type gets too small. Okay. All right. So let's go up and look at the cheat sheet and see what it tells us we can do. Well, um, if we want to verify that it's installed in the version number, we can type in uh, conda info. And we get a lot of stuff. But uh, let's see. The Python ver version that we're using is uh 3.6.3 final thought we were in 3.6.4 but that's interesting um that's what got downloaded for us when we wanted to say that we wanted uh python 3.6 we actually got a newer version than this interesting okay all right uh, let's look at some other things. Uh, we want to update Conda to the current version. Conda update Conda. We could do that. Uh, what if we want to install a particular uh, Python package? Well, Conda install package name. Okay. What if we wanted to work with environments? Because that's what one of the big things we're going to be using it for. Well, down under using environments here, Conda env list. Let's try that. Conda env list. And what do we have? Well, we've got um, we've got the same environments that we saw before. So, for instance, we've got. Um, uh, Django 11 uh, uh, development. Let me let me make that a little bit bigger so we can see. Uh, so we've got the base. That's the same thing as the root. Uh, Django 11 development. That was the second one we did. And plain old Python programming. Okay. Well, what if we were working at the command line and we wanted to use one of those environments or other. So right now let's just take a look uh, and see what what version of uh, Python we're using. So Python dash dash version 3.6.3. Okay. So how do we decide that we want to use plain old Python programming? Okay, that's not that hard to do. Um, how do we create a new I I environment? There's a syntax for that. We're not going to do that quite yet, but we will. How do we take an environment and activate it? Say that it's the one that we want to use. Well, if we're on the Mac here, um, the syntax is a little different than on Windows. On the Mac, we say source, activate, environment name. So let's type in uh, source activate and call it plain old Python programming. And I know I've been a little long-winded here. Uh, and then here we see happens is that on the left in parens, it says, oh, we're in this environment. Plain old Python programming. Okay. Now, let's ask what version of Python is in that. Okay. So let's say Python dash dash version. 3.6.4. So when we created that thing, it actually went out to 
the libraries and packages available through the um, uh, the network that we're using and um, which uh, primarily goes to uh, the Anaconda folks uh, first and it brought us down 3.6.4 okay that's nice um, uh, that's good so so long as you are in the environment it's just going to find all the packages are going to find that combination that you had in there where everything's all together okay and for plain old python programming that's probably all you need okay um a lot of the things that we would cover in my typical python course are already in that uh that uh, anaconda distribution um, if it turns out that you need some packages that are not available in that environment, well, you can come back and install some additional packages into plain old Python programming. You could do it here at the command line. So how could you do it at the command line? Well, um, Well, first of all, uh, this is kind of a conda list will show you all the packages that are in the environment. So conda list, let's type that. Conda list. And there's a whole bunch of them. Okay. Including Python 3.6.4. One of the things that's in here is uh, pip, which is um, the Python package manager now up until now we haven't used uh, pip explicitly we've just been using the capabilities of uh, conda to manipulate the environment but in a lot of tutorials and a lot of textbooks you'll see that people say well we want to install something um, let's install it with pip uh, okay and i'll uh, show you that before we're done okay all right well this looks good um uh let's go and create an environment from scratch so how do we how do we get out of an environment well again so we uh using environments we want to deactivate that's what we call it deactivate the current environment on mac os and linux it's source deactivate so let's just type in source deactivate deactivate okay and you'll notice the parenthetical expression that said what environment we were in before um well that's gone and again we're in that root or base environment where we're actually using uh, Python 6.3. How do we know? Well, we could say Python dash dash version. Oh, I can't type. Uh, Python dash dash version and 3.6.3. .3. Okay, that's good. Okay, so we've got three environments right now how about if we wanted to create a new one at the command line how about we didn't want to worry about that navigator i mean i, I went a long time without using that uh gui tool well um right here create a new environment now when they wrote this uh, a python 3.5 was the big one there so uh but here we're going to do this and we're uh we're going to call this uh, Python 3 we're going to ask for 3.6 uh, okay so uh, what do we say we say conda create and then dash dash name then this is the name of the environment okay um, um, and so let's call this um, Django uh, 11 also okay so this is going to be a, a Django version 
11 environment as well. Okay, and um, with all these environment managers, and the Conda one is no exception, um, you need to tell it what version of the Python compiler that you want. That's, that's the big deal, and the version of everything else works off of that. So we're going to say Python, whoop, Python uh, equal 3.6. And we're just going to press Enter. And it shows us it's working, and it says, oh, these are all the things that we want to bring in. Okay, that sounds fine. So uh, let's just give it a Y for yes. And now it's going to pull down a lot of stuff. And it's doing a lot of dependency control with these. So it's uh, bringing, in, uh, bringing in a bunch of tools and it's making sure that they're all um, that their versions um, are compatible with each other so the works all done okay it says here's how we activate it condo uh, conda activate django 11 also here's how we deactivate conda deactivate okay so let's uh, let's activate conda. Uh, um, you know, which is really funny. Um, <laughs> because uh, if you look at the, what it tells us to do here, we should say source activate. Uh, Pi, the, that's the name of the I I environment. So let's just uh, take it at its word. So uh, Conda activate um, Django 11 also. Oh, and that, that looks like that works. So in addition to source activate Django 11 also, it looks like Conda activate Django 11 also. That makes more sense to me, actually, to tell you the truth. Okay, so now we're in here. So now um, let's take a look and see what version of Python we have. We should, be, we should have the latest version of 3.6, which should be 3.6.4. In fact, if we look up here, you can see that's what's coming. But let's say Python dash dash version and there we go 3.6.4 so that's good but we said we we're also going to bring in Django and what a lot of my Django students do is is they use a tutorial that's a lot of fun it's from an organization called uh, Django Girls and um, um, they uh, do it the following way and they do it with this uh, pip tool, this uh, um, Python uh, package installer. So once you're in an environment, okay, you can continue to use the tools uh, here, um, which are uh, uh, part of the conda commands, or um, let's say you're working in some kind of a tutorial or a textbook and, and they say, well, you know, install such and such with pip. Okay, well, you can just uh, do it. And whatever pip installs in that environment persists uh, there just as though you did it with these uh, conda commands. So now I'm going to go, um, I'm actually going to go to... Uh, going to take a look at what directory I'm in and let's go to documents so change the directory to documents okay so I'm in uh, documents and um, if I go with what we do in the Django girls tutorial uh, it says okay well it's having you build the directory at the same time it has you uh, update the software. Okay, that's fine. So the the project is going to go into uh, 
a directory called Django Girls, so M-K-D-I-R, make directory, Django Girls, all one word, and then change directory, CD to Django Girls. Okay. Um, and then uh, it, it tells you how to create an environment with another kind of environment uh, controller. But instead, what we're going to do is we're already in this um, environment, Django 11 also, and I have activated it already. And now I, I just want to use uh, the pip tool to install uh, Django. Uh, so we can say pip um, install Django. And we can say sort of approximate version. So I put tilde equal um, 1.11.0. OK. And um, there are a bunch of expressions that you can use in here. Uh, this is going to get us um, the current version that's uh, kind of closest to 1.11.0. Um, so let's do that. So we're going to enter. And you can see it working. It's doing uh, Django. And if you look, uh, it looks like it's installing a Django 1.11.9. Now that's actually even a little more current than what we got out of the um, when we were using the uh, Conda tools. But given the fact that we are, um, we generally feel that um, unless we've been told otherwise, newer versions are okay, um, then 1.11.9 will be fine. So it has installed Django 1.11.9. So uh, how can we see what's here? Uh, well, you remember, um, uh, we can say conda list. Okay. Conda list. And let's just look uh, at Django 1.11.9. So because we use a pip, we got the freshest version available, not the freshest one um, in the Anaconda uh, coffers. Um, and of course, our uh, Python is uh, 3.6.4. Pretty good. OK. So. Um, and again, we're using this uh, environment, OK? And if we're at the command line and we want to stop using it, we can say either source, deactivate, or in this case, uh, uh, it seems like we're, we're able to say also conda deactivate. So let's say conda deactivate, deactivate. And that brings us out of that environment. OK, so um, if you're doing just plain old Python programming, you're probably going to uh, do this once, OK, in a typical intro to Python course or uh, beginning data science course. And um, you probably are not going to go back and install a lot of things into the environment. We probably do find if we do a uh, conda list again, we probably do fine with our uh, no conda environment list conda env list um, uh, we probably do fine with just plain old Python uh, programming. We don't have anything in there except the 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 basic stuff that comes with the Anaconda distribution and the version of the compiler that we want. So maybe that's that's the only environment that you're going to use. Uh, well, that's fine. Or you could be working with, uh, in one of my Python, uh, one of my Django uh, classes, 
uh, in the current semester, we're going to be working with uh, two vi d different versions of Django because uh, two of our textbooks, each of them works with their own kind of version. Um, and we want to be able to we want to be able to use the version that they were using when they wrote uh, a particular text. So we're probably going to have uh, three environments. We're probably going to have um, uh, something like plain old Python programming. We're going to probably have a, a Django 11 environment, and I think we're going to have a Django 8 environment as well. And you can have as many environments as you want. Okay? So uh, that's a lot, but uh, there you are. So you've installed Anaconda. You have a uh, it, you have uh, some feel for what these environments are and how to manipulate them both at the command line and how to use this Anaconda Navigator to do the same thing. Uh, you know what I want to do? I want to go down and fire up the Navigator and I just want to show that the Navigator sees all the stuff that we did at the command line. So these aren't, you know, two uh, different uh, capabilities. These are compatible um uh tools so that's bouncing in a really sick way let me double click it and see if it actually fires up the program uh, i must say the program shows a reluctance to load fast it's probably a probably a monster let me let me go hunting for it. Perhaps it's underneath uh, something here. Doesn't look like it is. There it is. And again, uh, sometimes my virtual machine runs a little bit more slowly here than I I thought this is a new release of the operating system. The virtual machine software is only so good with it. Okay. Waiting for it to come up. Almost there. And then we'll be, we'll have round trip this and you'll see uh, okay, so let's go up and click on environments. And uh, you'll see Django 11 also. So let's look at that. Okay, and if we go down and look, uh, we'll see when we see what version of Django is in here. And again, this is going awfully slowly for me right now. It's only when you want to show somebody something that things get really slow. Okay, so uh, Django, uh, we saw that it installed 1.11.9, and here you can see that here. Okay, so there isn't anything that says that if you're using uh, Anaconda or uh, Conda for short, there isn't anything that says that you can't uh, work with this Anaconda Navigator to set up environments and then work at the command line or do things at the command line, even build a new environment at the command line and then go look at it with the Navigator. All these things are possible. So... Now that I've got you at this point and you're, you've got your basic Anaconda orientation, um, I'm going to say bye until next time. Bye-bye.